a nice little slipstream from the kicks out in front of him coming up to the infamous turns 12 and 13 she came the wall of champions and the season one champion is going to set the benchmark on the intermediate tyres. If people don't know, we have a pole position for intermediate pole, but Safso, as I said it, that's almost perfect example of the commentator's curse because he's pitched it straight in the wall and the season one champ is going to be starting from the back of the grid and El Rey Guri with a penalty as well. Yeah, collision there with Safso is what gained El Rey Guri. That five place grid penalty, he'll start further down the grid than he once hoped, but the wall of champions has already claimed its first victim as Timo Marduk. Of course, Season 6 champion tops the timing sheet at the moment for the Williams Reserve. It's Meraki, their teammate, down in P13 as Hayden Gullis uh, re retires, I'm assuming, in a very similar situation to Safso. As you can see on the track map at the bottom of your screens, it's as you exit the Wall of Champions, Tesswell decides he's had enough. He's gone quick enough to get through to the Q2 session and emphatic dives into the pit lane to finish off. So both V-Cups will be starting from the back of the grid and will be going again if they can make it to the line with five seconds to go. That Alpine will just manage by the skin of their teeth to get one final run as the Haskar of Daddy flies into the grass and the gravel at turn one, avoiding the Ferrari as well, who did a very similar thing. But it will be the Alpine of Ultracula that gets oh. to go again. Unstop Rob tapping the barrier and invalidating their lap. That will be P16 for Unstop Rob. That is music to the ears of a couple of drivers around him. Daddy Flies managed to find an improvement to get into the one minute nine. So we're looking at Ultra Killer versus Blackmere versus Matty D, who's not improving. Ultra Killer down by four tenths. So I think his race is going to be run. GB finds a time to go third fastest. I think it's going to be the two Alpines that are going to make an early exit, along with the Red Bull and Mr. Dell and the two V-Carbs. Yep, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to see how this pans out. Ultracula has got one heck of a challenge on his head, hands as he goes down towards the chicane. He's not improving. He's a spin oh. out as well. He's into the wall. It's both helpings that will be knocked out here in Q1. Big name's going to be in very, very much trouble here because Test Will has gone into fourth as well on a 109.1. Emphatic, like you said, on a 9.3. Tiamat Marduk now pushed to the brink of being knocked out. He has gone again, currently on a 109.5. Needs to find a few tenths of a second. Reigning champion El Rey Guri in ninth at the moment as well on a 109.4. But is that a couple of drops of rain? I think it is. That could save Tiamat Marduk's bacon. Yep, it certainly is rain coming in. Daddy Flies retires. He decided he cannot go quicker. And that guy Vince would have been hoping that the rain came in just a few minutes earlier. The rain is going to come thick and fast now in Canada. And surely drivers are not going to be able to improve as long as that DRS gets disabled within the next few moments. Sir Dogan, though, deciding he still can put pedal to, pedal to the metal and go through Sector 2 here without a care. I wonder how committed he's going to be as he heads through turns 8 and 9. It's going to be crucial to see how fast the rain comes down. Historically here in Montreal, it gets very, very wet, very, very quickly. Sir Dogan, what's the delta? Half a second down, look very unstable coming out of turn number seven. This could be Q2 done with four and a half minutes left to go. And it's Tiamat Marduk, the championship leader, currently holding that final spot inside the top 10. Dak Govint is going to be cursing in Fratic because it was the Scuderia Ferrari car that kicked him out of the top 10. He certainly will be. There'll be lots of, uh, well, banter and jousting amongst the drivers. They are still enabled here on the Grand Prix circuit in this qualifying session. So maybe someone might be able to put on a, a set of inters, go for a last gasp hurrah. But I don't think it will be for long as drivers do start to retire from the session. Lolly Nova and a few others to boot as well. They'll all make their way back into that pit lane. Team of Marduk not improving this time out, unsurprisingly, after invalidating his last run. But he will be saved by God's graces as the rain does fall here in Montreal. And that is, of course, us done for qualifying two. And we have the five drivers that will be making ways. The rain pays a visit in the latter stages of qualifying for the third week running. And it's going to be Blackmere who failed to get a time in. Matty D13, Daddy Flies, Sert Dogan and Dat Guy Vince in a qualifying session that had so much promise after Q1. that we bitterly disappointed to end up only 11th up towards the final chicane. This is the first opportunity to see if uh, one of the world champions is going to be dragged into the wall of champions in the wet weather conditions. Eraguri negotiates it nicely and pulling gears up to line, keeping all the way over to the right-hand side. Short run to the beam. It is a 17-7 for everybody to chase. Yeah, no, Guerra, uh, sorry, Lolly Noba getting a little bit wobbly out of the final corner. Gillen could not do better. Naguera could not do better than Araguri has laid down at the moment. Could we have seen a return for who some people call the king? But Team McMartic up towards the line now. Can the Canadian try and pip out the top spot across the line? He comes. It's not going to be quick enough. He's hundreds of a second off Naguera. But El Rey Guri still over eight tenths of a second queer than everybody else. 
who stands just slightly in front of him. But it will be GB that starts on pole position for the second time in his Creator Series career. Naguera will start in P2 alongside him. And it will be a battle down into turn number one to see who can pip it out and start the lead of this Grand Prix out of turn number two. The lights go out and we go racing at Canada. It is a good pull away from GB and Noiguera. They're going to go wheel to wheel in towards turn number one, but it will be the soft tyre from GB that gets in the ultimate position in towards turn number two. And Infrati trying to swoop on around the outside here of Noiguera. Can he try and hold on as they run down towards turn number three? Will the Mercedes have the inside line? He surely will this time around. Noiguera managing to hold P2 from the offset here, but Team McMahonic on a charge from Infrati. Ben looking for every opportunity to try and relegate the Ferrari further down the field after starting from third position. Just about keeps it within Tranemus. He's going to swoop around the outside on those red striped soft compound tyres. Thank you very much. And from fifth on the grid, despite having ice cold soft compound tyres, Tim McMullock is up into the podium places straight away. Naris Meraki nibbling at the heels of the Ferrari of Infratic, but unable to make his way past. As look at how close Tim McMullock is now to the back of Nagera. This is a battle further back. It's the Alpine of Unstop Rob trying to make up for lost time. This is Tim McMullock. He fancies his chances of maybe leading the race down into turn number one on lap number three. But he does dispose of the Mercedes of Nagera. Yep, DRS, of course, being activated at the end of lap three. He will have that rear wing open. He moves towards the outside line. And with the rear wing open, that straight line speed being considerably improved this time around. Tim McMullock will take on us onto lap four here in the lead of the Grand Prix. Maguero will just have to settle for P3 at the moment. And the Season 2 champion trying to make up for what was an underwhelming Q3 session and moving into sixth place. Yeah, we're conditioned off favouring oh, Mr dear. Dale with the 34th DNF of his career and it's a safety car here in Montreal. Flap four of 70 and the Red Bull driver drops it at the exit of turn number four. Not what he would have liked to see and we're down to 19 almost immediately. It'd be a very smart move here from the Canadian just to keep the speed a little bit higher than usual. Don't allow those gaps to try and form up and I think he will go as we exit out of turn number 13. There we go, it's foot to the floor and the glight goes green. We go racing in Canada once again to start lap 7 of 70. Gullis is on the radio. Good luck everybody and I think he truly means that. Becomes beckoning. Meraki thought about a move on Alex Gillen there as they headed into 12 and 13. But the Williams will just have to wait for the time being. Araguri with the overspeed to the inside line. Goes past Naguera and up to P3. Yep, Tim McMullock almost under pressure as well, down into the braking zone. As look at the speed that GB and Aragura were carrying up to the back of the Papaya car. We could be three wide down into turn number one as drops of frame start to appear on the camera lens. Which way is Tim McMullock going to go? Which way is GB68 going to go? He has to go defensive because yeehaw around the outside goes Aragura. Just enough space left for the reigning champion and he pushes GB down to third. The master of the rain, El Rey Guri, managing to get a position there when they're still on the slick tyres into turn number two. And he now has the Canadian in his sights. The lead of the Grand Prix is beckoning. And we know just how quick he's been when the rain starts to fall. Matty D being the first driver into the pit lane for the green walled intermediate tyres. And Rob's ended up in a wall. Well, I think he's retired intentionally there because the car is moving, so his wheels are all still on the wagon, but he has got a safety car. That is not going to be good news for Matty D13, who was trying to steal a march on his opponents by pitting for intermediate tyres one lap earlier. But it does mean that everybody has their blushes spared and they can box at the end of this lap for a set of the intermediate tyres. Riccio 3 could be left in a little bit of trouble because I think he's going to have to queue behind his teammate. And the same could be for Test Will. He puts his foot to the floor and the green light flies and we're going to go racing once again in Canada. Tia McMahonic from Gurry from GB. And I think Aero Gurry not standing on ceremony here. He thought about a move into turn one, but didn't necessarily have the traction. You can see how filled up the battery of Ari Guri is as he moves to the inside line here for turn number one. He'll have the outside for turn number two, though, with the Red Bull. He gets the move done, but he doesn't as Timo Marnik tries to hold it. But swooping around the outside, he's gone deep. He could allow GB through if he allows, if he's on the traction. But GB couldn't quite get the pedal to the floor as much as he would have liked. Way too late on the brakes and almost allowed the Aston Martin of GB back through. Elray all over the place here in his attempts to get past Tim and Martin of the Championship League. And they're going to duel now down into turn number six. Not a lot of traction here in the dry. Going to be even worse in the wet. Can the Red Bull force his way past Tim and Martin, who's drifting on the exit? Enter GB68 in this battle as well. And it could be from first down to third by the end of the straight for Tim and Martin, but just chops in front of the Aston Martin. 
Gillen there with a classic bumping and grinding this time down into the hairpin. I think GB just has the straight line speed, but Gillen is always going to be braver on the brakes. And GB has to surrender the position and gets a big wobble coming out of the chicane as well. Going to lose another place. Could lose three positions as Nagera nibbling at the heels of the Williams and the Aston Martin. But the Mercedes getting boxed in. And it's now going to be Meraki versus GB down into turn number one. Slide into the apex for Meraki. I think that is going to allow the Aston Martin of GB to maintain position. As we head later into this race, but Alex Gillen looking very, very racy in these damp conditions. He's got Tim and Modic on strings as we head down towards the hairpin once again. He's got the inside line. Alex Gillen late on the brakes. Is he going to be trying to force it down the inside? He rocks, locks the rears ever so slightly, but Alex Gillen, can he get the traction down? Tim and Modic, both of them sliding out, and it is the Canadian who's going to come out on top in the form of Alex Gillen. Meraki drifting his way down into turn number one, locking the rear. is very unstable indeed in his attempts to get past GB. Nagera trying to get involved as well, tussling with the Aston Martin and Williams in front. He also struggles to get the power down. Ultra Killers out of the race. That could spare the blushes of GB. And we have got a safety car once again. And it is foot to the floor. The light goes green and we go racing once again. Ari Gurry with Alex Gillen chasing him down. But Tim and Mardik will be wanting to come through on tow. It's Meraki who thought about a move on GB as Savso off the safety car race tires, already up another position. Well, I think that will be the question on everybody's lips at the moment. We continue down towards turn number 12. Meraki moves to the inside line. He has the overspeed from the slipstream, and it's a nice, easy move in all things considered. GB, though, will just have to sit in behind a team at Mardik. Finally, de dethroned from the podium position that he sat in for the last considerable number of laps. And this is Dago Vince going for a move of Noiguero into turn number one. He'll try and swing it around the outside. The inside line comes for turn two. There's a little bit of rubbing his racing between the two drivers. But Dago Vince up to P6. He's only now one position away from where he wanted to finish in the top five to their names with the lead of the Grand Prix. Alex Gillen so much closer this time around. He into the slipstream. He moves to the inside line before turn number 12. And it's an easy overtake for Alex Gillen to take the race lead away from El Rey Guri. Are they going to dive to the pits? What are they going to do? Both of them staying out. What about the group behind? They've managed to close that gap by half a second on this turn. Is it into the pits? Yes, Tim and Marduk Maraki has been left out to dry. Tim and Marduk in, GB68 in as well. Wow, Tim and Modic and GB, the first to bite the bullet from our front runners as things stand. Let's see what tyres they do go on to. It's mediums for both GB and Tim and Modic. Ferrari further back. That'll be emphatic coming into the pit lane to get a fresh set of tyres. And it's also medium for the Scuderia Ferrari car. Very short pit lane, remember, so that might save Meraki's bacon. Over the line we go with GB and Tim at Marduk. Where is that bright blue Williams of the Season 4 champion? I think Meraki is just about going to hold on to track position. Yes, he is. Meraki staying in third position. That undercut hasn't worked. Tim at Marduk skating round turn number two as Nagera spat out from the pit lane, almost into the path of the McLaren. Aragiri will have some relief, though. He'll get the DRS from the laps car as they go past Blackmere. I think Blackmere will let Alex Gillen go as well. Back onto the racing line for the Scuderia Ferrari. And it's uh, Aragiri. Oh, Ooh. it's into the wall from Blackmere. Deja vu from the previous lap. The Ferrari almost ending up upside down coming out of the final chicane. We have a virtual safety car. It's not a full course safety car. So that will be music to the ears of Aragiri and Alex Gillen because they can keep the advantage they've got. Will anybody chance it for a pit stop? There's a big gap from Infratic back to Test Will and then Test, test Will back to Ricky. Does anyone fancy set of soft compound tyres if this VSC stays out for long enough? He slams it into the barrier. Got to be careful that the leading contenders don't smash into the back of him. And there's, uh, I think that's GB68 having to negotiate the Ferrari that was stopped on on the road there out of the final corner maybe intentionally he's going to take it right to the line here when is he going to put his foot to the floor damage. there's wing damage in the background somewhere Gary's going to take it to the line he puts his foot to the floor the green goes the light goes green and we go racing once again Gary from Gillen from Meraki look at the car park in turn one we had a Haas flying over the grass. Imola, not Imola, Mugello 2020, Canada 2024. We had a pileup going down the straight. I wonder if GB may have been caught up in that. I thought I saw potentially some Aston Martin bodywork. Safso on the move, though. He's up ahead of Dak Govins. Now he's behind him, battling over fourth and fifth position. Baraki has managed to hold on to third. Sir Dokens out of the race at the back. He's plowed into the barrier, coming through turns number three and four. Tim at Marduk still in eighth position, and the safety car is out once again. 
plows across the line to start what will be lap number 52, taking a very interesting line through the far chicane. And we'll continue to back everybody up. This time, everybody should be prepared for it. And thankfully, we don't see any car parts forming right at the tail end of the field. I think he's going to wade all the way up to the line. And we are going once again. 18 lap sprint to the finish. Alex Gillen has had a monumental restart with a look up the inside. Carnage further back. Nagera debating sixth and seventh place with Safso and Infratic getting involved. And Tim and Marnik on those brand new medium combat tyres pushes the Mercedes down a further place as GB makes up for the mistake on the previous restart to get back ahead of the kicks out of Batty D. Good restart from Ben Daly there. Immediately put it, trying to put pressure on Safso. He goes down the inside. He'll have to switch around the outside. Safso later on the brakes. The season one champion not wanting to let it go too easy. But Timo Marnik on the fresher tyres. Easy move in the end. Aguera trying to squeeze through past the V-Cup. And GB wants to follow through as well. The bank grade as Safso falls from sixth down into ninth place. It was looking so good for the season one champ, but now finds himself in the lower reaches of the top ten as GB is next going to be citing that Mercedes of Nagera. He's thinking about it there down into the hairpin. I wonder if the Aston Martin did send it up the inside. Tim and Marduk hold sixth. There's now a drag race between the two Mercedes engine counterparts. Meraki's come out of absolutely nowhere, meanwhile, to push Alex Gillen down into third place and potentially challenge El Ray Guri down into the final chicane. Meraki hasn't led this race so far, and he's going to continue to remain outside of the lead. Once we see that checkered flag, there's moves being made further back. Ricky past Matty D, and it is a little bit deep for Murray Guri. Could Meraki get the traction here? As DRS will become a factor for him. He'll be in the slipstream as they run through turn number 11, down towards 12 and 13. And we have a new race leader and team radio for Meraki. Alex left me plenty of room there. Fair play. Meraki leads us on to lap 54 of 70. He certainly does. He doesn't know whether to attack or defend at the moment. Does he want to stick one down the inside of Gillen? But I think we could be from the three right into the final corner. Gillen down the inside. It's a double move for the kick Sauber car. He's up to P1. Pips out Meraki, who's all the way down to P4. Now P5 as GB manages to pip it out. Tim McMarnock from P4 is up to P2. GB back into the podium positions where he finished last time in Season 7. It's all change here in Canada. All change but stand in P2 and P3 will send the exact opposite as we head down into turn 12 this time around. Tim and Mark might go left. It might be GB that goes right. We are seeing it set up. It is going to be three right. No, this not this time around. Tim and Mark, an easy overtake with GB following him through and the drivers on the fresher tyres with 12 laps to go are in the lead of the Grand Prix. But GB, the Canadian, will retake the lead of the Grand Prix. Tim and almost, and there is contact between himself and Alex Gillen, shifting over on the straight on once again, always entangled and entwined with each other. Tim and and Alex Gillen, and that is a race ruiner for the kick Sauber, as he picked up damage from Tim and coming across to try and block the kick Sauber, and almost this has all come up. GP has come up trumps for him. He's been gift wrapped this race. He's just got to try and open it in the remaining 10 laps. Is in 50% of you oh, at home. No. Oh, it's a three second penalty to GB for track limits, but he's got half a second to try and contend with. Over seven more laps of racing, he's got to try and pull a gap now. And Team Mardik will be trying to egg him on, or will the McLaren try and chase him down for the lead of the race? But I think it could be too little, too late. He's 1.7 off the back. We have Test World retiring. I think it oh, could be no. too late for a safety car, but no, it's not. It brought everyone back into contention. And this surely is race over for GB. That could still go on to win the race. It's not over until the fat lady sings or the checkered flag flies here in the crate series. And GB has put his foot to the floor. That light will go green. And we will go racing for lap 69 of 72 laps to go. Just over five miles to contend with. Will it be GB? Will it be Tim and Monica? Or will El Rey Guri get the victory here this afternoon? They'll all get the rear wing open. Can El Rey Guri, though, get the traction that he would have liked? The rear wing waits patiently to be opened. There we go. Released like a spring. But I think he's too far back on this occasion. It is surely going to go the way of Tim and Marduk. GB might get it on track. And I think Tim and Marduk is going to let him do it. GB will cross the line. But with penalties applied to his name, Tim and Marduk will take win. Number 11 in the Creator Series. El Rey Guri gets a podium. Meraki will join the monitor as well.